Okay, so here we are at the camp, uh, and we're with Antonio today. And Antonio, uh, you got arrested, was it yesterday or the day before? I arrested there yesterday at uh, five past eight. Uh, what was the arrest for? The arrest was for obstructing police officers. So, how was you obstructing the police? Would you like to describe it in your own words? Um, yeah, there was a there was a mass peaceful demonstration yesterday, and um, the police were trying to get in between our information desk and our IT room, there's a big board in front of it, right, and he was trying to forcefully his way through, putting people's lives in danger because we had boiling hot water inside the tea room with a gas bottle. And I just put a chair in front of the information board and I stood on it. And uh, that was it, that's what I was arrested for. So what did they actually charge you with? They haven't charged you, they said the reason they arrested me was for obstructing a police officer. Well, that's it, but they haven't charged you with anything? No, they bailed me until the 29th. What, to a court of appeal court? Back, back to the police station. Which police station is that? That's uh, Crawley. Crawley. So, uh, basically, they've yeah, arrested you, told you it's for obstruction of police, but they haven't charged you. No, and they also said that I had penned two police officers that had gone into a dead end themselves, and there wasn't enough room there to get my dog, let alone a, a police or two police officers through there. Right, and how, how does this make you feel overall? It makes me feel, I don't know, disappointed at the police force, really, you know. Uh, angry that they're being used as uh, private security for the, the drilling, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been here four weeks the same as you. And as, is this police presence, as, do you think it's got better, worse, or is it the same? I think it's got worse. Before we were allowed to, uh, we were allowed to uh, march at our own pace, but now they're, they're, they're ramming us, they're pushing us forward, you know. So, yeah. I, I, I've been experienced the two days today, and literally that phalanx of police officers uh, are becoming more and more aggressive. Uh, would you, have you seen that? Have I mean, you seen it from the side of the radio as, as well? Yeah, I have, yeah. They really are ramming people, pushing them, you know. Yeah, they're, they're threatening to arrest people for structure, even though they're moving. I mean, do you think that's fair? No, it's not fair. And then also to send a riot squad here to peaceful protesters, right? I think it's just a bit overhanded, you know, a bit too much, really. It's, yeah. it's painting the wrong picture, isn't it? You know, we're sending the riot squad to people that are peacefully protesting, which you, we have a right to do. Yeah, I mean, do you think that the government are now using our police force as a weapon against us. Yeah, I think they've been using that for a long time, mate, and I think it's only just coming to the people's awareness, you know? I mean, do you think this is a good thing that this is happening now and here in Middle England, so the, 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 the core conservative vote are now actually seeing exactly what their police do? Yeah, it is good that the media, that the media is showing, hopefully they're showing the true, you know, the true picture here, that how the police are being used, yeah, against us. And abuse, they're being deployed, they're being deployed as a basic a paramilitary force, are they not? Yeah, of course they are, definitely, yeah, to abuse peaceful protesters, really. Absolutely. Did you see it up there yesterday, the, uh, the riot police up there with all their batons and shields and that? Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah, which was a bit over the top, really. Did you feel intimidated by that? Yeah, very much so. And they basically evicted that lot this morning, was you there for that? I went over there to help uh, clear the camp and just pick up all the litter and everything, you know, so we left it how we found it. How would you describe the police presence there this morning? Uh, intimidating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah, it is horrible. Uh, did you see them actually injure the old man? They pushed him into a tree. No, I didn't see that. No, bit. Sure I didn't, but, uh, we caught, did you catch it on camera? Yes, yeah, so we caught it on camera. So basically, right. they've assaulted a man in, in the process of uh, eviction. And uh, do you think that's fair? I mean, do you think that officer should be arrested for uh, assault? Yeah, I do feel that anyone that's really uh, physically injures anyone else should be arrested, really. Yeah, of course. Take it through the course. Yeah, of course they do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Irrespective of... Yeah, uh, irrespective whether you're a police officer or you're just a, a civilian. Yeah, I think so. All, you know, it's one law for everyone, not, you know... We're, we're all equal to the law. My, my supposed offence, my alleged offence happened on a Sunday and I was arrested next day at uh, ten past, five past eight. Well, under what circumstances were you arrested? I was pounced on by probably eight or ten police officers. Really? Really? Yeah. Eight o'clock yeah. in, in, in the morning, the morning right. The yeah, night. I was just about to have my second cup of tea and they just pounced on me. So where was that, down there? Or, or yeah, down there. So it was down on the, down on the, uh, yeah, the campsite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any idea why they didn't arrest you at the time? Uh, no, I've got no idea. Maybe, maybe because there wasn't an offence occurring. Maybe that's why they haven't arrested me on Sunday because there wasn't an offence, you know, committed. Yeah, basically, they've come back. With... They've come and hunted you down the yeah. next day at eight o'clock in the morning with absolutely no warning. I believe that the night that you were arrested, we were actually sitting down quietly having cups of tea in front of the officers, in front of the gate. And they could have arrested me there. They could have just come quite easily, have come over, put their hand on my shoulder and said, excuse me, sir. You're under arrest. 
Would you like to come with us? Yeah. 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 Instead of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like you Instead of that, I was, a policeman has just come along and I was presuming that it was entering the uh, Cordilla site and all of a sudden they've just pounced on top, on top of me. You know, but, like a prey, I was like, you know, they pounced me. I know that you, oh, no you found that quite traumatic and unnerving. Yeah, very much so. so yeah. I mean, were you scared? Were you shaking? Yeah, I was, you know, it, 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 it was, you know, traumatised, you know, it traumatised me really. What was your treatment like while you was in snatch van? Uh, they were quite hard on me, really, up until they trans, trans, uh, transported me into the other van, and then things got a bit easier. But up until then, they were just telling me not to resist, and I'm not a violent person, I'm a pacifist, you know, and they were, you know, wanting me to resist, right, because they, you know, were using harder, t you know, they were a bit hard on me, yeah. And, and, and what about your treatment in custody at for the police station? To be honest with you, they, they were pretty good, mate, you know. Yeah, you know, I can't say that, right, you know. And I even, when I left, I even thanked them for their hospitality, to be honest, right. The food wasn't so good, but everything else was, yeah, yeah. Got your own room and all that else. Yeah. yeah, I was complimented by a, a police officer that interviewed me that she liked this T-shirt, but she said that she didn't think that she would get away with wearing it, and I suggested that she put a mask on and wore it, right. And then another one complimented me with my green... Sure. Yeah. Me is educating the mass to really respect the energy because if we don't respect it, the more we produce, the more we're going to really waste. And you know, and that's the way forward is to educate people, use more eco LED lights, you know, reduce our consumption of um, energy. Really, that's the way forward for us all. Really, otherwise, we're doomed. We're doomed. So okay, so Antonio, you in your hand, you got a piece of paper. There. Would you like to sort of give yeah, the viewers? A um, well, what it says to me is, is they haven't really taken any notice of what's on this paper, right? You, yeah, and on here it says you must take reasonable care to avoid acts or omissions which you can reasonably foresee would, like, would be likely to injure your neighbour. And which, you know, yesterday, the way, on Sunday, the way that they were trying to get through, I don't think they took that into consideration, really, you know. And I, I don't think they're taking any notice of what, what you know, what's here. And, and one of the police officers turned around and said to me, right, that this isn't the law, yeah. right? And on the back, it's got no. a bit of and, and he says because this hasn't got the axe on it, this ain't the law, yeah, right? It's just the police right. oath. Yeah, and then it says the police oath uh, um, of office. Eco activists are being arrested for upholding the police oath, which is protect life and property and uphold the law, and, that, and that's not being done, right? That is not being done. The most serious threat to life and property on the earth today is due to unnecessary, unreasonable environmental. D damage and destruction, which is commonly agreed, including by the members of police and armed forces at all ranks. So ba basically, these people have been forced to do things maybe they don't even want to do by arresting people like you who are just standing around, basically. No, but maybe they should turn around and say, I'm sorry, I can't do that because it's against my police oath. Absolutely. So really, what are they doing? Are they not aware of their own police oath? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, there was the cost factor in this as well. Uh, because the people must realise this is costing over a million pounds so far. Are you aware of that? It's cost a million pounds, but that's without wages, I've been told. That's not taken in consideration of what the wage bill has been for this, because they've not disclosed that. And, and do you think, really, uh, Quadrilla UK should pay this place? Yeah, for sure. Rather than being given a 50% you know, tax relief, or, 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 you know, I think they should be charged for the policing of this whole operation. Right. To be OK, people, this is Nick, and Nick was there when Antonio was arrested. Um, so, would you like to tell us about it, please, Nick? Sure. Well, basically, um, the day before, and there was a sit-down demo outside the gates. I was standing next to the information tent with Antonio on two chairs, and we were trying to stop the police from running between the two tents and knocking them down. There was a, a tea urn in one. We've told them repeatedly there was gas in the tea urn with boiling water, and would they please not pressurize the tents too much? And I was standing there. We stood there together for about two and a half or three hours. And then at about four o'clock, I realized there was probably going to be some arrests made. So I exited to do some shopping and buy little bits of supplies like cardboard and pens and super glue. Went to Hayward's Heath, bought some stuff. And anyway, the next morning I was sitting about, I got up about seven, I wandered down to have a cup of tea as I normally do, sitting at the main gates next to Antonio. And suddenly he got up and there was a big kerfuffle behind me and he was gone. He just disappeared. I thought, well, that's crazy, you know? Three or four policemen jumped him, threw him in the van. It looked as though they were like torturing him, had his hands up behind his back, and it was very scary. And I just thought, well, how, what did he do? 
When did you actually see the officers uh, literally lock his arms behind his back? Well, I, I just, he was standing behind me. The next minute, there was all these policemen surrounding him, at least four, and they were doing violent things. So I don't know exactly what they were doing. They certainly were bundling him against the bonnet of the van and asking him not to be resistant. He says, I'm not resisting. But well, you know, I'm not expert in torture, but whatever they were doing was forcing him into the van. Were these policemen talking or shouting at that point? Well, they were probably shouting at him, but yeah, they were shouting at him and just telling him not to resist. But I don't think he was resisting, but they were definitely manhandling him into the van. And I think everyone was very, very shocked. There was a lady called Mandy and she said she couldn't have her breakfast, you know, because of the way he was suddenly lifted away from the camp. Yeah, sna snatched, that's called. Absolutely, it's snatched from the camp with, for no obvious reason, but... It, would appear that they studied the films and they spotted that him, he, was like stopping the police from trampling our information tent. And they were a bit upset they couldn't just rush through. It, you know, 20 policemen running through between two tents would have wrecked the tents. There would have been the information tent gone. And I'd already seen them like trashing the meditation tent earlier in the afternoon. So you see when they do a mass stampede, things get destroyed. People could be trampled to death. Of course. Uh... I think the ultimate aim of that is actually to wipe all that out down there so we have to move. I mean, that, would that be fair to say? Well, it's obviously clear that they're, they're picking on anybody who, who's been here a, a period of time, four days, five days, six days. They, when they've spotted, they, they consider that some people are probably more active than others and they're just picking off the people they consider to be supportive and active, which is actually everybody. But people, everyone's bringing something different to the camp. There's no... There is no hard call. The people are here because they believe in the cause. They're not, no one's being paid. But it's like the police, the taxpayers are paying it 750 million. Well, we're here for about 3,000 quid. We're not being, no one's being paid to be here. You have to be here because we're committed. Absolutely. Um, and, and with the hardcore bit, I, I always believe it's actually a, a call that's hardened by people who join together in unity and solidarity. And that brought down communism in Poland. I don't know about that, but the, the people who are here are committed. And the more... They stand firm. The, the, people are saying they can cope with being arrested, but actually it's a very unpleasant situation. You, you spend the day in the cell, you might feel isolated. You're very isolated, and if they restrict your movements, then that's a, a bad situation. We're, we're not restricting their movement. They're marching up and down. They're driving their vans up and down. They're upsetting the local people by their presence. The presence of the police is scaring people. Have you noticed a, a, a more sinister feel about the police over the last sort of few days? Well, definitely the, 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 the morning of the breakfast, I think it was Monday, when I told you, there was some pretty young-looking guy, like 25, you know, they all had truncheons, they were different sort of attitude. They weren't looking, they weren't talking with anyone like the day, the previous day. They were always bringing in like, slightly more aggressive and more hardline police to deal with the situation, which is entirely peaceful, which is wrong completely wrong and nobody is appreciating what they're doing. Oh, it's a stage having to crack a nut, I know that. Um, so, in finishing, was you scared, was you frightened? I mean, what was your real emotions at this point? My emotion was how, how, how sad it was to t take away a completely innocent person who'd just been standing his ground to stop the tents being trampled. I, I just felt incredible sadness that the way that there was no legal observers around. The media had had the spectacle when Caroline Lucas was arrested, so they'd gone into retirement, the, the people who could have filmed it weren't there. Cause we were just having a quiet breakfast, cup of tea at eight o'clock. We nothing was happening. We were just sitting down, unwinding from the previous day's activities. And we've, we've noticed that they seem to snatch people exactly first thing in the morning when people are unawares. Absolutely. My friend was nearly snatched. He, he was a friend from Brighton. He was just walking down the road and all of a sudden there was a van behind him. The door slid open and someone made a lunch for him and he managed to escape. But they, they, he was on his own. They, they are taking people, when they're coming out of the toilet, or just walking on the road completely. They're looking for people who are perhaps not with a buddy. And also, they're spending time studying the movies they'll be making to, to make them feel better about who is running the show. Well, there is no one running the show. And, and yes or no answer, just to finish. Um, do you think we're now living in a quasi-police state? We are undoubtedly living in a police state. Thank you very much. Sir.